Glossica, Michael here. The ox is one of the most important animals of the Chinese zodiac, and it plays a very important role in the history, the culture, and the language of China. But more importantly, the role that the ox plays is not just unique to China, but perhaps even more universal than we had anticipated, as it plays a role that is inclusive to all of our cultures worldwide. Let's take a look at the etymology first. There are a number of words used in English to refer to the ox. If you are interested in etymology or the spread of words throughout languages, what is most interesting is the large-scale diffusion of several of these word roots. First, the word ox is an extremely old word surviving thousands of years from the Proto-Indo-European word uxen. This word survived in the Indo-European language Tocharian, then spoken in modern-day China as Wokso, which eventually survived in the modern Turkic languages as Ökus. Likewise, Turkic already had a term for a male ox called Buka, which survives in most Central Asian languages and has jumped language families into Iranian as Buka and Russian as Bik. Second, Latin had another word for ox called bos, which descended from the Proto-Indo-European word wos, which was ku in Tocharian, which also spread into China in Proto-Sino-Tibetan as ngwa, modern Burmese as ngwa, modern Mandarin as nyo, and southern Min Taiwanese Hokkien as wu, the word survived into Germanic as kuz, which is ultimately where German ku and English cow come from. In both Greek and Italic languages, the first letter w eventually became pronounced as b. This is where English gets its romance-based vocabulary such as beef and bovine from. Third, a female cow in Proto-Indo-European was called woche which survived only in Italic as woka and Indo-Iranian as wacha. This word ended up in Latin as vaca and Sanskrit as vasha. This is where the French vache, Spanish and Portuguese vaca or vaca, and the English root vaxi, such as in vaccination, derive. The modern Arabic bakara appears to be related, but isn't. Fourth is the Proto-Indo-European word tauros. In Indo-European languages, there is something known as mobile s or s mobile. So there are many words that simply add the letter s in a convenient way to create more vocabulary. In this way, the word tauros descended into Persian as sotur and into North Germanic languages as theoras, and in West Germanic languages as steoras, which over time became the English word steer. What is interesting about the North Germanic pronunciation is that it's even more similar to an even older form of the Proto-Indo-European, which ultimately came from Proto-Semitic thaur, which survives in Arabic as thaur, and Hebrew as shur. Of course, it's worth mentioning some other well-known words that descended into the Romance languages. Spanish and Italian toro, Portuguese toru, and of course the English zodiac sign Taurus, which brings us back full circle to the zodiac. First, let's take a look at some proverbs from Arabic. The word cow, or bakara, is quite famous and well-known because it's the name of a chapter in the Qur'an. The Qur'an has 114 chapters, and chapters vary a lot in length. Some chapters are only three verses, while the longest chapter is 286 verses. Each chapter has a name, and the longest chapter in the Qur'an is called the cow, named after the story about Moses, which was an argument between Moses and the Israelites about finding a murderer. In Egyptian mythology, Hathor was a cow goddess, and she was the goddess of love, beauty, dancing, music, and fertility. Hathor's symbol was a cow with a sun disc on top. She was represented as a cow because cows were considered 
highly valuable animals in ancient Egypt. And among all the domesticated animals, cattle were the most important livestock, and the size of a herd reflected the prestige and importance of the estate or temple that owned them. Thaur is the male ox or bull. This word is also associated with strength and power in Arabic and sometimes stubbornness. Our first proverb comes from Egypt. Lalahu fi thawr wa la fi tahim. This is an old Arabic idiom originating from Egypt. When poor people couldn't find any food, they used to gather around the wheat mills trying to get some wheat for their families. The mills were powered by large and strong oxen. When the millers got tired of the poor following them or sitting in front of the mill the whole day, they would get upset and tell them, you're not doing the ox's job nor the milling, or your presence here doesn't benefit the ox or the mill. So this idiom is used when telling someone that this is not their business or this has nothing to do with them. The second proverb comes from the Gulf region. Yashina sar jalal bakar. How ugly is the saddle on the cow's back? It's used to tell someone that the cloth they're wearing doesn't suit them at all, or the thing that they're doing doesn't suit their personality. Now let's look at some proverbs from Chinese. Li da ru niu. This is used to describe someone who is as strong as an ox. Ta kan qi lai hen jiao xiao, dan shi li da ru niu. She looks tiny, but she's as strong as an ox. Jiu niu er hu zhi li. It literally means someone is powerful and strong enough to pull nine oxen and kill two tigers. Now it's used to describe making massive, Herculean efforts. Ta hua le jiu niu er hu zhi li, cai ba wen ti jie jue. He made Herculean efforts to solve the problem. Niu pi qi. This literally means an ox's temper. It's used to describe someone as stubborn. Ta de niu pi qi chang re de da jia bu gao xing. He's so stubborn, he always upsets everybody. Zhuan niu jiao jian. This literally means that someone wastes time on something not important. Ta hen ai zhuan niu jiao jian, zhi zhuo yi xie bu zhong yao de shi qing. He's always wasting time on something that's not important at all. Now let's take a look at some Taiwanese proverbs and phrases. In Taiwan culture, historically the ox has played a very important role as well. Before the existence of farming tools, farmers used oxen to till the fields, and society developed an intricate relationship with the animal, to the point that you're still likely to find whole families who refuse to eat beef. In most people's minds, the ox is an image of industriousness, strength, and perhaps even stubbornness. And although the ox doesn't play this role anymore in modern societies, you may have noticed that the ox survives on in modern language, embedded among our many proverbs and metaphors. Sei han tao ban bu, dua han tao kan gu. This means that those who learn to steal while still small will end up being big criminals as adults. Gam guan zou gu, um gian bo dei tang hua. This literally means that as a hard-working ox, there's no need to worry that there won't be work to do. If you're willing to endure hardships, you can easily get a job. This means one must obey one's elders, otherwise they are lower than animals. Fear your wife and you're a real man. Beat your wife, and you're a pig, dog, or ox. Man's life is meant to be full of hardship, like an ox plowing fields. Now let's take a look at some French proverbs. The ox in France is a symbol of kindness, calm, and peaceful strength. In the peasant world, it designates a land that is abundant in harvests. It's a symbol of fertility and tamed strength. In Christian iconography, the ox denotes humble work. It's considered a beneficial animal, especially since it witnessed the birth of Christ. First, some proverbs about power. On n'est pas de but. We are not oxen. In the past, oxen were used for heavy work. When men were asked to do much hard work, they would say, we're not oxen. This expression is still used today when one wants to express, you're asking too much of us. Fort comme une bœuf. Strong as an ox. Being strong as an ox means being very strong. Cet homme est fort comme un bœuf. This man is strong as an ox. Souffler comme un bœuf. Panting like an ox. 
This expression refers to the panting of the ox, an animal known to pant very loudly after it has made a great effort. Après avoir couru pour prendre mon train, j'ai soufflé comme un bœuf. After running to catch my train, I was panting like an ox. Now some proverbs about personality. Avoir un bœuf sur la langue. Having an ox on the tongue. This expression is said to date back to Greek antiquity, when a coin marked with an ox was traditionally used to buy someone's silence. An ox being heavy, it was a symbolic way to prevent tongues from loosening. Today, quelqu'un qui en bœuf sur la langue, someone who has an ox on his or her tongue, is someone who persists in keeping a secret. Some other proverbs. Un vent a décorné les bœufs. A wind to dehorn the oxen. This expression means that the wind is very strong. In the 19th century, the dehorning of cattle was done in the open air and without disinfectant. Farmers waited for a very windy day to do it because the strong wind helped speed the cicatrization and prevented flies from clustering on the wounds and infecting them. Il fait un vent à déconner les bœufs aujourd'hui. There's a wind to dehorn the oxen today. Mettre la charrue avant les bœufs. Putting the plow before the oxen. In the 16th century, dismantling the plow to put it in front of the oxen meant the end of the workday. So to put the plow before the oxen is an analogy for doing things in the wrong order. Le grand bœuf apprend au petit à labourer. The big ox teaches the little one how to plow. This proverb means that knowledge is passed on from generation to generation. Qui vole un oeuf, vole un bœuf. He who steals an egg, steals an ox. This means that to commit a petty theft is to set oneself on the path to delinquency. How is the ox viewed in German culture? Oxen are viewed by Germans similarly with swine, not very intelligent. In fact, calling someone dumme Kuh or bleu de Kuh is not only offensive, but you may also be fined hundreds of euros. The first phrase is, Ich bin keine Kuh, die man melken kann. I'm not a cow that can be milked. I'm not a cash cow. Don't take advantage of me. The second phrase is, Man wird alt wie eine Kuh und lernt immer noch dazu. One ages like a cow and keeps learning into old age. In other words, be industrious like the cow and keep learning. The ox in Japan. Beef in Japan was banned for over a thousand years. Japan's emperor Tenmu was highly influenced by Shintoism and Buddhism and officially banned people from eating beef and horse. And it wasn't until the 19th century when Emperor Meiji ate beef that the ban got lifted. Since the ox is slow, you can describe a person who acts slowly as Ushi no Ayumi. Proverbs from Korean Koreans have been influenced by Chinese culture and also observe the Chinese zodiac. In Korean culture, the ox represents hard work, honesty, and patience. The year of the ox is meant to be a peaceful and happy year. The ox plays a decisive role in Korean culture, helping the farmer with the fieldwork. The ox has been called a walking safe. With such a high price, it can be sold when a farmer needs money. It's worth noting that Korean cuisine is not lacking for beef, and although a Korean may say they can't eat beef, what they simply mean is that they can't eat any other beef than their own home beef, as the price is so expensive elsewhere. Due to its value, beef can also be presented as a gift to friends, and definitely superiors. The little ox grows horns on its ass, used to describe an annoying person. The ox stepped backwards and caught the mouse, used to describe one's luck. Fixing the stable after the cow is lost, trying to prevent something after it's already happened. Even bad cows give birth to good calves. This is similar to the Chinese proverb about bamboo shoots. Dai zhu chu hao sun. Earn money like an ox. Eat food like a rat. Or in other words, work hard and ration. Reading verses to a cow. This is the same as the Chinese and the Thai meaning that it is useless to explain things to someone who won't understand. Russian In Russian culture, the ox is a symbol of power, physical health, Stamina, perseverance, but sometimes also stubbornness. There are old sayings like Zdarov Kakbik, healthy as an ox, or Silion Kakbik, strong as an ox. 
In the past, an ox was an honored creature, the embodiment of strength and manliness. Traditionally, the ox was a sacrificial animal. Bones of the sacrificed ox were thought to bring happiness and wealth to the owner. Kakurovi sedlo, like a saddle on a cow. This one is used when someone or something does not fit into a situation or a condition. I need a car like a cow needs a saddle. Milking cow. When something or someone is used for profit, both in positive and negative situations. The English version is a cash cow. iPhone. iPhone has been Apple's cash cow for over a decade. Svashina Karova. A holy cow. Unlike in English, where it is used as an exclamation, in Russian, it's almost exclusively used as a comparison, as in, it is like a holy cow to them. His car is like a holy cow to him. Healthy as a bull. This phrase is used for describing good health. I never had COVID. Healthy as a bull. Mujik bik. A man is like a bull, a somewhat pejorative expression used by women for describing a stubborn man. My husband wouldn't listen to me. This man is like a bull. A parasite is like a bull. You get neither wool nor milk from it. An old-fashioned proverb used for talking about parasitic people. Come on, why do you complain? You know he's lazy. A parasite is like a bull. You get neither wool nor milk from it. I thought it was a cow, but no, it's a bull. Yet another old-fashioned proverb used for telling about an unexpected, normally undesirable outcome. I thought that the new iPhone would have a better battery life than the previous one. Nah, I thought it was a cow, but no, it's a bull. It's all the same. No matter how hard you fight a bull, you'll never get milk from it. Used for an outcome which, although somewhat expected, is still disappointing. He swore he'd change, but I guess no matter how hard you fight the bull, you'll never get milk. To take the bull by the horns. Take the opportunity. Take all chances and risks while possible. Come on, go talk to her. Take the bull by the horns. Like a red rag to a bull. Something irritating. Talking about traveling is like a rag to a bull to her. A good bull is worth half a flock. It's better to have one good big thing rather than many small ones. It doesn't matter the team's so small, it's a good team. A good bull is worth half a flock. Upyorsa kak bikragami, stubborn as a bull. Dajini pitaisis nims porgit, on upyorte kak bik. Don't even try arguing, he's stubborn as a bull. Kakavakarova takovi telionak. A calf is just like its mother, like father, like son. Znaya yevo reditilie, nogavat nevo nishdi, kakavakarova takovi telionak. Knowing his parents, you can't expect much of him really. A calf is like his mom cow. Bitches darovie, bull health. It means very healthy. U mnie bitches darovie, no ja wszystko równo pierwsza balier koronawirusem. I have a bull health, yet I still got infected with COVID. Zdarov kak bit i nie znaje kak bit. Healthy as a bull, but don't know what to do. Used to describe a resourceful person or a fruitful situation with very little to no further actions. Ja mogu pojechać w lubiu stranu, no nie znaje kuda. I have enough money to travel anywhere, yet I don't know where to go. Like it said, healthy as a bull, but don't know what to do. Thai. Oxen in Thailand are traditionally seen as the all-purpose beast of burden, but also not that intelligent. 
The ox has a rather negative connotation in Thai culture. In Thai, kwai is a slang word for buffalo, and used to call someone stupid, and is one of the worst insults. And due to Thailand's diversity, part of the Thai population is heavily influenced by Chinese Buddhism and Chinese culture. Just like how many Chinese farmers don't eat beef, many Thai farmers don't eat beef because cows are an important companion for their work. Let's take a look at a few phrases and proverbs from Thai. w a k a i k i n g ya on. This means a marriage between an older man and a younger woman. w a h a i l o m k o Fixing the stable after the cow is lost, or trying to prevent something after it's already happened. r a k w a h a i p u r a k l o k h a i d i Spare the rod and spoil the child. If you love your cow, tie it. If you love your kids, spank them. s e so hai k w a i fang. Cast pearls before swine, or water off a duck's back. Playing the Thai instrument s o to a water buffalo results in not being understood. Turkish, the ox in Turkish represents hardworking, diligent, and strong. Inek, this means hardworking. Or with a negative connotation, a bookworm. Chok a k l e amai nek b i r o r e n c h i d e l He's a smart student, but not always just reading. The next are three phrases that all have the same meaning: buzai gibi, dana gibi, sir gibi. They all mean clumsy. Sir gibi b i r k a f a s i v a r m s h He's clumsy. Deli dana gibi d u n m e k Go crazy like a cow, or like mad cow disease. Deli dani hastaleri, chanta sun chaderin ch deli dana gibi dumme bashlade. When he stole her bag, she went crazy like a cow. Ökus gibi emek, to eat like an ox. Bir anamda ökus gibi yoros amaki almuyoros. Although we've been eating like an ox, we haven't gotten fat. Ökus gibi güçlü, strong as an ox. Hala ökus gibi kuvvetli görünüyor. He still looks as strong as an ox. Language learning requires a lot of planning, effort, training, and practicing. Our vision at Glossika is to minimize the amount of planning and effort required, and increase your exposure via native speaker audio. Since every language is unique and has its own set of difficulties, Glossika has developed methods to sort this complexity in a way that's easy to learn and acquire for students like yourself. We hope to level the playing field of difficulty between languages. By doing so, we're able to present a wide variety of languages and make them accessible to any kind of learner. Reaching fluency may feel at first like an insurmountable challenge. To take full advantage of all that Glossika has to offer, sign up and start training today. I'd like to give special thanks to Anastasia Lidier, Clément Hatigay, Lin Xianqi, Imadedin Fatah, Ivan Grayson, and Peter Chiu, YP, and Claudia Chen for making this video possible.